What up? It's your boy, The Incredible Man, and I'm back at it again. And this time, I know I'm super late, but some other stuff went on. But I'm here now. And this is Kometsu no Yaiba, episode 12, discussion slash review of, for, for what I do. Okay. But, dude, I just seen this episode. Okay. And, well, before I talk about it, I just have to say... Kudos to the director and the cinematographer for this episode, man. I don't know if they're the same people that's been in every episode or they're new people or not. But you have to give them major props for this episode, man. This episode was absolutely fantastic when it came to the direction and how it was filmed, man. Dude, the scenes where the other demon was changing the room around and the camera followed or they panned the shot and Tanjiro was on the ceiling and the demon was on the floor and they flipped it. The visuals for this episode was absolutely fantastic, man. So the cinematographer and the director, they need a round of applause from everybody because they done their jobs to perfection, man. They absolutely sold me on this episode. I felt like the room was actually spinning and I was in the room when it was spinning. Major props for that, man. But now, let's get to the let's get to the good stuff in this episode because there's a lot of stuff that went down in this episode that was absolutely fantastic. Okay. The first thing I'm going to talk about I was talking to someone um, about last week's episode, and they was like, uh, get, uh, good thing you didn't write Zenitsu off, you know what I'm saying, because uh, it's going to pay off in the in the long run. I mean, he, he he's going to show you his mantle. He's going to show you what he's capable of. And I was like, okay, okay. But, I mean, they didn't have to sell me too hard. I mean, I found the character to be very entertaining, and so I was like, I was willing to give him a chance. So, dude, I gave dude a chance in this episode. He absolutely showed up. Let me start. Let me see if I can find it. The name of the move. I wanted. That's what I wanted to. I wanted to do because we knew that he was like he he used lightning because we saw that in the opening. But, dude. Okay, I don't know if it's like a split personality or if it's like something that occurs only when he's in danger. But he falls asleep. When like I'm assuming his life when his life is like in in imminent danger, but he falls asleep and dude falls asleep and gets unconscious. But it's like at that moment he becomes super aware of his surroundings, man. Dude is like I don't know, man. But he, I I don't know I don't even know how to describe it. That's because that's how awesome this was, man. The demon stuck his tongue out to kill him and the I can't remember the kid's name. But to kill him and the kid. And in that instant that he done that, man, he had time to draw his sword from like from his hands being laid down flat and him passed out like this. Draw his sword, cut his tongue off, put his sword back in, let his hand back down like nothing happened. Do you know how fast that is, man? Dude, that was absolutely fantastic to see that scene be done, man. And then next thing you know, he like he like starts to get up and sit up, and then all of a sudden. He just starts breathing like real, like real weird, and like steam starts coming out of his mouth. Like, and this thing, and the demon's like, "Well, what's going on?" It's like his aura is changed. I'm getting a different vibe from him. What is going on? And dude, let me see if I can find the move. Hold on, I I I, I, I forgot the name. Uh, he cut the demon's tongue off. Then he stands up and 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 with the steam and stuff, and he gets in his stance. And oh, look, hold on, let me see. Um, do do do. Okay, okay, here it is. It is called... No, what is it? No. Okay, he's doing the move. Let me see. Okay, he's drawing a sword. That, okay, before I do that, that scene where the camera p uh, panned up, like with his leg extended and the camera panned up again, those are the scenes and stuff that I'm talking about for this episode, man, where the room was changing and scenes like that. Dude, this is an anime episode. This is not with real actors or anything like that. This is an anime episode. And this this kind of d direction and, and, and cinemat cinematography that's done in this episode is stuff that you'd see in a movie, like in a major movie, man. The stuff that was done in this episode. I don't know if anybody else feels this way, but I don't care what nobody say. They deserve an award, a trophy, or something for this entire episode because it was done absolutely fantastic, man. But here's the move. Thunder breathing first form. Thunderclap and flash. Dude, and look how fast he moved and cut his head off, man. Okay. 
The name was absolutely fantastic. I love a good name. Uh, Thunder Breathing First Form, Thunderclap and Flash, man. Dude, that was absolutely glorious, man. But now I'm starting to understand some stuff because um, each uh, Demon Slayer has their own uh, style, of course. We knew that. But the names. We have Tanjiro, which is water breathing. Zenetsu, which is thunder breathing. I, I, I can't even talk. Thunder breathing. And then we have the guy with the boar's head. I, I, I know I'm supposed to be talking about something totally different, but like all of this kind of goes together. Then we have the guy with the boar's head that has the... Uh, what is it? Hold on. I got to find his too. Give me a minute. Uh, Hold on, hold on. Okay, he's, fight, he's fighting the big demon that was walking around the hallway. Uh, hold on, let me see. Okay, self-taught beast breathing. And I'm assuming that has something to do with the boar's head and then like like the hide that he has on his on his on his legs that looks like um fur wrapped around his legs and stuff and then he has his shoes on. I mean it's like sandals or whatever. But I'm assuming that this has something to do with, you know, like like that's why he has the boar head. But when he was talking to Tanjiro and he was like, be careful of my blades because they will hurt you. And you can definitely see like he had like he cut the blade and like it has all of these different ridges in it. Where it's, it's, it's going to do damage if it cuts you. But the names for these things was absolutely fantastic. And I'm starting to see a trend because we have Tanjiro with uh, water breathing and we have uh, Zenetsu with thunder breathing and we have dude with the boar's head with self-taught beast breathing now beast breathing absolutely sounds fantastic so i know he's gonna he's gonna hack and slice some stuff like crazy man but the emphasis what i wanted to touch on was self-taught zenetsu and tanjiro were trained by other old school very early demon slayers and they passed their stuff on to them they were taught by other other of uh, older uh, uh, senseis and masters and stuff, but now they sh they really made this um, highlighted when they showed this dude's fight scene because they didn't have to show this. So I'm definitely thinking that that was a uh, intentional. Excuse me, um, for them to for them to uh, do that because it says self taught beast breathing and the whole thing was absolutely fantastic, man. The way that he demolished that demon, okay. I didn't even need like super duper fight scenes. These quick, instantaneous fight scenes that we got between the dude with the boar's head and Zenetsu were great. I didn't need a long drawn out fight. I I just needed that because I didn't know it was going to be that entertaining, man. But then we get what else we get? Oh, we get to find out about the demon, and they showed him in the opening, and I seen that, and I was like, okay. But I figured he was going to be a major player if they show him in the opening. But to find out that he was a member of the twelve. If I'm, if I'm saying it right, I think it's the 12 demon moons or something like that. That's along with the, the big bad of the show. But he got cut out of the group and now he's trying to work his way back up with the rare blood of uh, of children. And now, and what's weird is because Tundra, well, I mean, I mean, it's not weird because, I mean, they lived in the forest and he wouldn't know that because he's, his, his mom was not a doctor or anything like that, that everybody has different blood types. And blood is rare, like like each blood is, and, and and they're looking for super rare blood. Now, out of all of the blood types, we you know I think we have A, B, A, A B, then we have like positive and all like A positive, all the other stuff. And I'm assuming that O is the super rare blood type that they're looking for. O O O blood is you know that's even rare in like real life. So I'm assuming that that's the kind of blood that they're looking for. And that's the kind of blood that would satisfy the demons the most and feel like it, it could feed them like over a hundred times of what a normal A or AB or A. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know how the blood works like that. But I'm assuming O is the magical blood that they needed to suffice and put them over the top. But now I'm starting to understand the specialty of everything so far is really coming is really coming together for me man and you know not being able to read the manga well i can but i just haven't 
and I, I'm just enjoying watching the show so much more, man. But um, I may read the manga when this is all over. But um, I'm assuming the old blood is, is is what we is the special blood. But then we get to find out that their brother's still alive. You know, he somehow got the demons. Uh, the little drum. I can't think of the name. And he's been surviving by just whoever he sees open the door, he transport him to another room. So I understand that's okay. But then we get to that's pretty much all that happened in this episode. Then we get to Tanjiro fighting the demon at the end, and you know him him still being hurt. And with him being hurt, he can't really muster up enough strength to really matter in the fight, and that kind of really messes with his head and his heart, and it put fear into him. Like he didn't really have fear at all going into any of this but now that he's hurt and he feel like he can't really continue and fight the way that he wants to because his body's hurt and he's afraid but throughout the fight I, you can tell that he, that he starts to remember his training and he sees the next in a flashback and was well not in a flashback like a premonition type thing and was like ah Tanjiro Sad you're hurt <laughs> so yeah man I love Zenetsu by the way man and um, he was like, I'm not hurt, shut up, I can do it. And, and, and he kind of just goes through it. But next week, man, it's going to be some jump, man. I'm definitely thinking that Tanjiro's going to be fighting the dude. And somehow along the way, he may, be, he may do something that kind of gets ahead of the dude. But I don't think the fight's going to go his way because he is not expecting dude to be one of the 12 demon moons. If I'm, if I'm, think, if I'm saying that right. One of the 12 demon moons. And I think the boar's head dude is going to show up and help Tanjiro. That's what I feel. It, it, it just feels like that That would be, it would be written that way. Because in the opening, we see that Tanjiro is with Zenetsu. And the boar's, the boar's head dude is along with them on their little party journey trip type thing. So that would be a perfect opportunity to show him, to sh for them to show us that he's a reasonable character and someone we can like and relate with and to be part of our little party and crew so that's what i think man but that's all that happened in this episode i'm so excited for next week episode i can't talk next week's episode man and i don't know i kind of just rambled I, I i discussed a lot of stuff but i kind of just rambled because i was so excited because a lot of stuff went down in this episode and it showed me a lot more about the demon slayers and i'm so I'm loving Zenetsu now, man. It, dude is beast. And I really want to know what's going on when he falls asleep. I, that's something that's major. And the dude with the boar's head, he's intriguing me a lot, a lot more, man. But this is way longer than what I wanted to be, man, for me just talking about the show. But this is your boy, Dick Incredible. Don't forget to smash that like button until you can't smash it anymore. Comment down below, and I'll be sure to respond to each and every one of them. And subscribe, but only if you really want to, man. And remember that anime matters, anime is greatness, and anime is life, man. Peace out.